Pot pies. Yes, one of our favorites. We we're excited because we both love pot pies. Yes, I love a good pot I've, pie. Because I've made pot pies before using, you know, your basic French bechamel recipes mm -hmm. and whatnot. Yep. And if you freeze it and you thaw it out, it breaks, you yep. know. Um, and so I wanted to, to make something that I could freeze and then come back to later. And uh, I think I did it. It's, it's awesome, this recipe. Um, and so we start with a couple of hydrocolloids and a freestyle um, 210S, which is great for freestyle. And it allows you to put the sauce together. And then when you thaw it out and, and bake it in the oven, it doesn't split apart. Yeah, let's jump right into making the sauce. Because one of the things we wanted to make sure that was important is that this is kind of a minimum effort project. Yeah, it's If super you easy. are like, I want to make my dough from scratch, I want to like do all this stuff, you certainly can. But if you're like me and you're like, I just want to take my pre-bought dough, I want to take my frozen vegetables and just dump it all in, yep. you can do that as well. First, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a nice little chicken stock, store bought chicken stock and we're gonna get that into our blender. And then we have our dry ingredients. So we have a little bit of tapioca starch right here. We have some 210S, which I was talking about earlier. Yep. That's the gum arabic and xanthan. It's a stabilizer. Stabilizer. Mm -hmm. We got a little bit of salt. We got a little bit of sugar. And then we have a little bit of methicel. This is a low viscosity methicel. All right, so once we got that in here, we're just gonna mix it up just so that when we disperse this into the chicken stock as it's blending, it's uh, incorporated a little mix. And then we're just gonna slowly add the dry ingredients. Yeah, it's always important to slowly mix it in because if you dump all those hydrocolloids in at once, it's gonna clump up, right, clump real up right fast. Exactly. Yeah. I have a little bit of vegetable oil here, which I'm gonna slowly Add as it's mixing, and we'll just emulsify that into there. And so I'll let I'll usually let this go for about 30, 40 seconds just to make sure that everything is nicely incorporated. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get that into the pot. And you can already see it's like it feels like it's a bechamel because it's so white and creamy, it, yep. but there's no dairy but in there's here. There's no dairy at all, mm -hmm. and that's awesome. So we're gonna turn this on to about to about medium. You'll start as you can see it's starting to bubble, and then you want to start whisking that up and then look at that yeah. look how beautiful that came out i do love that all right so that's done now we're ready to go so all we got to do is get our dough get our vegetables get our chicken and we can put our pot pie together all right for today we are making a couple of individual pies so that we can each have one but you can also make this in a regular size pie tin as well yep. so if you have the same amount you can make four of these little pies but we like little pies so let's make little pies what do we one, do? One note, just yes. make sure that the vessel that you do use can come out of the oven and come out of the freezer and go into the oven Ooh, okay. without cracking, because mm -hmm. that's a major thing. All right, good point. All right, so let's start. Super simple. We have some uh, puff pastry here that, I, that we're going to use. Oh, another thing about the puff pastry, which I didn't say before, is that mm -hmm. um, puff pastry comes frozen. Yep. So you can thaw this out and then make your pie and then refreeze it without any ill effects to the puff pastry itself. Okay. So, very simple. Um, I already, as you can see, I have a couple of squares here, but I already cut these into rounds. Mm -hmm. So you wanna just get that in there. Mm -hmm. And you wanna start off with a couple of spoonfuls of your sauce. You're gonna get some chicken in there. And then some vegetables. You can use any vegetables you'd like. Um, so I put a little bit more sauce on top to cover that. I do, I'm a big fan of the chicken, so I'm gonna mm -hmm. throw a little bit more chicken on there. Just a little bit more vegetable. You wanna get a little bit of your egg wash on the lip of this. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna put this right on top. And then I'm going to cut around. Now you can just, you can just cut this to fit your, your mold, but you wanna give yourself a little bit of space because uh, the dough tends to retract a little bit, so that's okay. why I made this one uh, overlap so much mm -hmm. and then you'll just cut around it and then once you get to about a half you can feel underneath it once you get to about a quarter inch um, past the rim of that you can start to give yourself your nice little uh, I love doing this this is like my favorite part <laughs> this is like this is like grandma used to make just like that all right so once this is done you're ready to go into your freezer we have our frozen modernist pantry pot pie, we have our control, and we're about to break into them. So, first, of course, the visual inspection as I'm making a mess. <laughs> but this one has a much more oh, creamy look. look. Yeah. This one is like a little soupy. It's not fully together. This one looks better. That one better. is great. Yeah. 
first, we're going to dip into the control. All right, you first. I mean, the flavors are great. The gravy's a little thin. It tastes okay. Oh, one mm -hmm. thing. One thing about using the roux and whatnot for texture is, no matter how much you try to cook that flour out, mm -hmm. you can still get that floury taste mm -hmm. when I when I bite into that. Yeah, it's by no means terrible. I think this is how I. You know, that's how you know the, they people, normally come yeah. out. But I want to taste the. I want to taste our MP version. All right, let's go. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, so look you how can kind of see. Silky that is. That yeah. that is beautiful. Like this, again, I'm so surprised. It always looks like there's dairy in here, but no dairy. No dairy at all. Mmm. Oh, it's so good. Mmm. Exactly. Really smooth, uh, texturally balanced. This, that's what I, that's yes. like one of the things mm -hmm. that I like about this. Texturally balanced. Mm. Obviously stayed together very well seasoned. I would say, I mean, I pretty much made the sauces exactly the same way, mm -hmm. seasoning-wise and whatnot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the the difference, like I, I mentioned earlier, the difference in that floury taste, whether you make a bechamel or whatnot, you're, it's just, it, you can't compare it to that. This is like super silky smooth, mm -hmm. but this is way better. It's, it's yeah. just um, perfectly balanced. I love it.